Okay, welcome to the Glide Academy podcast. I am your host, Ez Chandra, and on this episode, we're going to be talking to Matt Reed about photography for e-commerce. Uh, Matt, thanks for coming on the show, mate. Really excited to have you here. Great to be here. My yeah. pleasure. Awesome. Um, so I'm going to do a bit of a bio so the viewers know who you are. So Matt is a former owner of a retail store, e-commerce business, an online training business. And now for over 12 years, Matt's focus is making imagery to work for businesses. A business or agency is called Some Effect, and it's a commercial and photography filmmaking agency based in Perth, WA. Working closely with organisations Australia-wide that need visually to communicate their products or their brands. He's worked on a range of startups and e-commerce brands like Rubra Coffee, Kira EFM, Sodashi, Somic, Conscious Co Candle, and um, Mr. Poppins and Co. So a lot, there's lots, even Face Halo and many more. So together with the PR and communication agencies and advertising agencies, marketers and business owners, Matt and his team create photos and videos for e-commerce campaigns, websites, social channels, and even traditional channels as well. So Matt, welcome to the show. Um, we've got our first discussion points. We want to get started. Flat, <laughs> flattering intro. Thank you very much. Job done. Yeah, job done. <laughs> um, okay, so point number one. So basically, you know, just tell us a bit of a story about how you got started in I guess the whole e-commerce business um, you know I think you, you owned a didgeridoo uh, you know, online store which is quite fascinating yeah it's yeah. a it's a random one so yeah. <laughs> myself and a mate amongst other random ideas were yeah. learning to play didgeridoo at the time yeah. and and we got quite excited about it and one of the ideas was imagine if we could spend our time teaching people how to play this thing mm. and so next minute going up to the Northern Territory finding didgers mm. opening up a store and grabbing every kid young and old mm -hmm. we could and sitting them down teaching them how to play and I can't remember the this was in 2002 long time ago but from the get-go we we knew it to be we're into the instrument we're into the music and so mm. we knew it to be a worldwide kind of um, focus as opposed to a souvenir on the wall yes yeah and and we didn't know what we were doing so you start trying to build a website and it was like front page or something disgusting i can't remember the <laughs> software but it was like oh it was front page wow yeah that's, just, <laughs> that's taking it back eh? i think it's that was Isn't it, that, it, that was a microsoft product yeah, like front page, yeah microsoft, and yeah. it was just anyway so <laughs> i'm glad they got out of the website oh game, my goodness <laughs> so in terms of selling digits online yeah, yeah. you need to take a picture so out come the little camera and you mm. nothing but like when you start most businesses you don't know much about most things mm. and you start learning about it mm. and, so and did you have all the equipment back then did you sort of like no you just started with whatever yeah it was like camera. lean it there yeah the camera that i take on holidays mm -hmm. take a shot yep and then crop it the background was still all in it yeah it didn't look good yep. but it allowed people to see it <laughs> and then, <laughs> which was handy yeah. and uh, fortunately we had a shop front so yep. we had the face connection with people yeah and people visiting all the time so started selling them but it was it was clunky as in like people mm. would fill out their credit card mm. details in an email form yeah and yeah. click send and then we would grab that email and put it into the merchant machine and, and I think there was quite a long lengthy process in terms of checking out on an e-commerce website like it's not like now where it's all oh, one it's step two steps <laughs> so good now there was a painful period especially in Perth yeah. well, especially in Australia yeah it was so clunky that it wasn't that hard it was in like just put your credit card details in and send it unsecured mm. then there was companies trying to build secure checkouts mm. and there was like the 17 page checkout next 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 second last page if you got something wrong it'd take you back to the front um, and if you think about it like if you wanted to go through that process you would have really really wanted that product like. yeah you got to be committed <laughs> yeah, like <exactly>. fully committed <laughs> and then when you sell the same unique handmade dig twice to two different people then you got a situation so mm. there was that so mm. it was it was just in the trenches really mm. trying to figure it out and big part of it was making the products look good making the instrument look good so mm. it was looking a bit dingy over there let's try it over there let's put uh, let's do it against that wall what happens if we change this setting what happens if we change mm. that that's looking good mm. that looks crap mm -hmm. how come um, and, and did you find like as you were updating, I guess over time the, the, the photos were getting better and better. Yeah. And did you find that you know, you know, conversions were improving on the website, sales were increasing every time you 
yeah. did a reiteration of a shoot or something like that? Yeah, they yeah. did. And one thing I noticed is no, and still to this day, no one thing mm. we've ever done has led to like exponential improvement. Yes, I understand, yeah. It, it seems to do this. Just little increments at a yeah, time. I mean, that's, like, but that's e-commerce, right? That's yeah, how you do it, and, yeah. That, and that's what it is. It's like a thousand little things. So tweak the product photography, it jumps up immediately. Um, but it, it's not going to keep exponential. No. And so then you add another thing and it jumps up and then you add a video and then it jumps up. And then, so it's like the more you can round out the experience. And I think like anyone that's getting into the e comms game is, you know, even if you're working with agencies, it's like those small incremental steps that you take. It's not, it's, yep. it's the long-term game and it's about the process as opposed to just getting quick results and, um, you know, quick sales results and things like that. I think people are always really into performance and they want it instantly, you know what I mean? So Yeah, I yeah. get quite nervous for people who want to launch perfection mm. and it go really well. Yep. It's like you're probably going to want to make a thousand changes. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Forever. <laughs> yeah. And so I'm a big kind of uh, continual improvement mm -hmm. have a go give it a crack mm. and then uh, and tweak and tweak and tweak and yep. tweak yeah. um, and I think you've been working with some big brands as well like I guess um, across lifestyle images and things like that that you've sort of built over the years like yeah. you, this is before you started your agency you, yeah. you gained a lot of experience well yeah. a turning point actually like the turning point for the didgeridoo business which is still significant to me today is during that time in business, I followed my partner at the time to the UK. Mm. She was living there, so mm. I lived for a short amount of time in the UK, a mm. couple, couple of years, and was still working on the dig business, but I was also trying to live a life there. So mm. I landed a job with a ski and snowboard and surfwear mm. clothing and hardware company called Two Seasons, and they had mm. a handful of branches at, or stores around the Midlands at this point and they, were, they had a website, but they were wanting to fire it up, mm -hmm. and I was kind of their web guy. And which was <laughs> process the orders, get the stock from the store, photograph anything that we didn't have supplier images from. You did everything, like the all-rounder. Yeah. yeah, and then I just treated it like my own business, so. But it would have been, you would have learned so much. Yeah, I learned about SEO, and yeah. it's like, okay, um, titles are important. And but so, even the back end of it, like how to run an e-commerce uh, yeah. business, you yep. know what I mean? And that's, yeah. and I'd only come from that kind of wiring. So I just treated it like, here we go. How do we make this work? That's so cool. Yeah. I really like that. Yeah. And the big, the big shift was while I was in that business, the big brands, which we didn't actually work with, like your Quicksilvers and your Roxies and your Billabong, they would send you campaign imagery every season. And so CDs at the time, in would rock in the CDs and you would be able to pull out images of those board shorts on Kelly Slater in Tahiti on a massive mm. wave. And there you've got the product image. And it's like pulling together um, email newsletters and ads and um, in-store displays. And, but, you know, product pages was so easy because you had, you had the product shot and then mm. you had the, the feeling, the experience, mm. the lifestyle. And that was just something that I just thought just you know that's what happens mm. so that's what we did but then when they come back to Perth back to the did shop it's like we don't have big <laughs> brands sending us seasonal lifestyle images yeah. of but I mean they the, the big brands they set the standard I guess and yeah you really saw the power of how these lifestyle images yep. around products faces. could create emotion faces yep, people it just puts things in context yeah and it sort of opened you up to this world. Yeah. yeah. It was a jarring moment when I looked at the Didgeridoo website, which was doing well, mm. in, um, with the experience of the lifestyle website, mm. Two Seasons, and it's like, there's no people, there's no life, it's just all products. And so we did an experiment. It's like, let's get a picture on every single page mm. that's relevant to that page of a big smiley face. We had yeah. a great crew, good mm. culture, happy people, and so, I was getting better at photography at this point. And so we just made sure we photographed all the team this way, that way, drums, flutes. And on the top of every, um, of every one of the store categories mm. was a fun beaming face of one of the team in the t-shirt holding the product or using the product. 
and then that did another step change. Mm. But the thing that I didn't expect, and this is what I still pay attention to now, is the tone of the email inquiries changed. So there was a lot more, hey guys, come into Frio in April. I can't wait to come and visit. Hey, Santi, what are you playing in that picture? Hey, guy, there was all of a sudden a connection, mm. which you, which we didn't have when it was just Before. products, 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 yeah, products. Yeah, I understand, yeah. And it's like, ah. And fortunately, as a business, we had, we had a space and we had the people we could leverage that. And it's like, oh, okay, that's a big insight. Massive insight. So that goes into our next um, topic, which is like, if, if you're an e-commerce business owner, okay, you need to take for photos for your website and your products and stuff like that. Um, how do you break that down so that people can kind of create focus in terms of their strategy for content production? Yeah. Yeah. So you've had, you've got three points that you mentioned. Yeah. yeah like we've, and our thinking keeps evolving, mm. but at, a, at the most, if we're talking just e-com, mm. at the most basic level, there's, there's three kind of categories of photos. There's mm. classic e-com on white which is the shot of the product, white background. White background, yep. Add to cart button next to it. Yep. Um, then there's what we would call creatively styled, which is nothing fancy, but like a nice nice surface, a couple of props, or just some sense of uh, this is in the real world, pretty much. And then there'll be campaign and lifestyle mm-hmm. imagery, which is, I guess, really communicating the feeling of having this product in your life. If if we flip that, and I, I just think about it like the buyer's journey, customer's mm. buyer's journey. Mm. So you land wherever you're going to land or you hear about a brand, you jump on the feed or on the website, and then at a high level, you want to get a bit of a sense about the brand. So mm. that's where your lifestyle and campaign imagery can really kind of set the scene of who you're talking to here. Mm. Homepage. So nice shot of perfect customer out in the wild Mm. drinking their coffee beautiful setting the scene click drop into a category into the website and then typically with most websites there'll be a banner across the top another opportunity to communicate and then there's the product shots so then at that point i would drop down more into at the creatively styled let's let's bring the focus into the product but we can still be a bit aspirational, inspirational. Mm. So we can still set the scene and, and give those give the page some feeling. Yeah. yeah, I love that, yeah. And then when you drop down into the product, it's like, well, then, then there's room for the uh, classic on white, mm. which is, if you think about it like um, inspirational, kind of aspirational, down to educational. Mm-hmm. Like at some point when you're about to click add to cart or choose your size, yeah. it's like, what am I buying here? Are there buttons on the back? Do I need another stand to hold that thing? Mm. Um, So it's just thinking about where the customer's mindset's at Mm. along the way and kind of tweaking those or answering those questions. Like at every step of the customer journey, so to speak. And the interesting thing is like, you know, those photos that you invest in for your website and those stages that you, you outline there can be... Um, reposition in terms of a marketing campaign you know you can reuse those that that the content of course. Um, yeah. and even on a campaign level like you can really on a marketing perspective you can use those um, you know you talked about the context of having an environment or a lifestyle shot those sort of shots can be at the top of the awareness funnel you know the yeah. brand awareness yeah. and then um, you know your product photography when you're getting into the finer details that can be like your remarketing or your retargeting campaign because people have already come to the website. You're just more reminding them, yeah. okay, hey, you left this in the cart, like, do you still want it? That yep. sort of a thing. Yep. So I think it's all those three elements of what you mentioned is really useful for business owners to take to take note of. Um, but it can be implemented on a on a website level as well as a marketing level. Yeah. And often we'll we always think about. So there's two questions. What job does the photo need to do? I say photo, but it's photos and videos. Mm. Uh, Use that interchangeably. Imagery. What job does the imagery need to do? And then where's it going? Mm. Which will determine more technically, are we creating a vertical image for a Insta story? Exactly. Or or does it need to be cropped this way for a web banner? Does it need to be both? There's dimensions and all that sort of elements as well now. Yeah. Often we'll shoot a scenario both ways so it can be fit for purpose. Mm -hmm. That's something that's 
in the last few years like pretty critical mm. to be aware of mm. before you take a whole bunch of fancy photos that don't fit in the spot where they yeah. need to go. Yeah. Um, yeah. I also wanted to talk about like, um, you know, particularly from a marketing perspective, um, the brands that we get to work with are the, the most fun ones and the ones that we feel like are the most results are going to get the results are the ones that have that that why they know who they are um and so when you create the awareness strategy because people always go like you know got to push that product and get the brand awareness but if they know who they are it just makes your job so much easier doesn't it so yeah i was wondering if you could talk to us a bit more about that and your experience in that yeah Yeah. always looking for i would call it the heartbeat Mm. like what's the um another example is say web copy the about what are you about if you can get that to the point where you can articulate who you're about Hmm. or what you're about in a way that if you took your name out and someone else's name in it wouldn't make sense anymore then you're starting to get to the essence Hmm. and and that's tricky that's really hard and and it'll always evolve but it's it's good to know that because if it's like oh if that's the thing um, a guy, Denny, who works with us, he calls it the red wire. So it's like the red wire that runs through that everything needs to clip to. And then uh, together, yeah. if you can find that. The red wire, that's a good analogy. I yeah, like I like that. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Heartbeat or red wire, and it's like the, the thing that everything needs to clip to, sort of thing. Um, mm. that's, that's valuable. And then you want to make sure that comes across in the image. So is that, is that part of your, I guess, your briefing process? Like you try and really understand what that heartbeat is of, yeah. of that business? Yeah. Yeah. And usually it's in conversations like this. Usually if you ask, ask the question, mm. you get a generic answer yep. or um, something that's uh, crafted, yeah. something that feels like marketing. Sure, sure. But if you chat it out, yep. there'll be a thing like it'll normally fall out of a conversation. Can you, can you give us an example of one? I know I'm throwing you on the spot. but <laughs> Yeah, I mean, a couple of different ways. I'll give you two examples. One, not e-com, because mm. often... It can come from, um, like good inspiration can come from something mm. outside and then an e-com example. And then also a different way to think about it. So instead of trying to come up with the perfect sentence or the perfect USP or that sort of thing, there was a restaurant that we worked with for some time. They were plateauing and we needed to like fire up the, the love. Get, um, and that was all through marketing, Insta marketing. And so we went in there and then we got a sense of there were like different buckets. So think about it like buckets. One of the buckets was whenever we went in there, some random grower would come in through the door with a box of produce with things hanging out. And it's like, that was beautiful. And that was a regular, it's just a daily thing. Mm. It's like, that's a bucket. That's a real point of difference that I haven't seen in many other places. Another bucket was music, and so there was live performance venue, so there was music there, and and music has a feeling straight up, and so it just seemed to be in the place. So it's like, okay, another bucket is the music. It's good, good to capture that visually as well. Yeah, and yep. then and so kind of step one was come up with the buckets. Yep. And then when going about creating videos and imagery, then it's like fill the buckets up. We need some. We need that feeling of like in comes random farmer walking through the door with produce for real and it like happens it's like oh my that's gold and love that i love that analogy the yeah. buckets i mean it's i guess it's similar to like with social they have content pillars yeah and the content pillars are like strategic pieces of content yeah that you're creating to target an audience i guess yeah. But what your I think yours is more like what are the golden nuggets of that business? Yeah. You know, it's not so much content pillars, it's more like what are those key pieces of content that yeah. people are gonna go, Oh, that's really unique. Yeah. You know. Um, and it allows yeah. you to tell a rounded story mm. when you start say if we talk about the feeds we're now mm. in, where there is volume of imagery, it'll if you're like mm. ticking your buckets as you go, then you're telling the full story of the business. Mm. And so, I guess that's um, Photography is really about storytelling, isn't it? It's like really understanding that why and the purpose of the brand, how it started, what's involved, what's the dynamic of that brand yeah. or the service in that case is a restaurant. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it needs to kind of really tell like a bit of a picture so that yeah. pe- when people visually see it, like it's five seconds nowadays, yeah. you've got someone's attention. Yeah. So you just need to really make it quite quick and snappy. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. 
And then another example from a, so ecom wise and now from a consumer mm. perspective is there's a company called Grove Made, G-R-O-V-E Made, they're in Oregon. Mm. And I don't know how I come across these guys, but um, they, they basically make desk accessories and monitor risers and just like really beautiful. I saw some imagery and then just fell in love. I had a quick look at the website and then they're just a bunch of like, creative people all in a workshop making beautiful image like making beautiful products mm. and it's and then flicking through and you watch the little video and then you see the faces and you read about a few people and then you drop down into the products and they're like beautifully made mm. and craftsmanship is yeah, yeah. And it's like I, as a consumer it's like oh these feel like good people making really good really good products and there was a what got me was they have nice room sets, room um, shots of desks and rooms, and this is how your workspace could look. And mm. I saw that. It's like, oh, I love the curves in the yeah. monitorizer. And so, it, you know, you could buy something way cheaper, way closer, and have it today. Mm. But it's like, no, I'll save up for that. And I got that thing, and it got shipped, and it was, you know, a couple, here in a couple of weeks. And, and I've bought multiple things from them over the years. And whenever I go back and look at them, they really tell that story of here's the people making the products mm. here's the process behind it here's the beautiful places that their products go in that i aspire to in this case and then when you get down to like well here's the products here's them without all the bells mm. and whistles mm. so you can make your choice mm. yeah and i think um with this podcast we will try and um include because you've got a great portfolio so we'll try and include some of them in the in the editing i guess yeah, so that people can see it drop in some links yeah. or pictures or, so yeah. just to show an examples because the stuff that matt does is amazing um and it is about telling a story i mean there's an example uh we have um because we do a lot of like sort of startup startup sort of um fundraising capital yeah. raising campaigns crowdfunding yeah. and stuff yeah and there was a brand on uh, kickstarter called uh, la mancio mm-hmm. which is just a, a women's handbag um, but it's a multi-purpose handbag, so it's like six in one. So yeah. you can use it as a travel bag. You can put it on as a backpack if you want to, if you're traveling on the train. So their messaging is like six in one handbag for active women. Also awesome. women that have multiple purposes for their handbag. Because often, you know, like you catch the train and then you come into work and then you're in work and then you're going somewhere else. Yeah. So you want one bag that kind of yeah. capsulates everything. Makes sense. Um, and that that's about telling the story as well so they really invested in photography um, for their Kickstarter campaign and it almost tells the story of how it works Smart. Um, and they I think their target was like 10 grand to raise and they ended up t- um, raising like 3.7 million dollars <laughs> which is phenomenal <laughs> yeah that's amazing so I think so going clearly back, something went right yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I, but I think like the that is that the purpose of that story was just more like you know if your why is so strong but then you can tell that through imagery and you can really tap into that. Yeah. Um, you can actually get some really amazing results. Um, yeah. yeah, and there's almost always something there, the mm. why. Mm. It's usually, or it's often hidden from mm. people. Mm-hmm. Um, the other extreme would be sourced any product, don't care what, what it is from China, get it on Amazon with everything else <laughs> that looks like that. That's the other extreme. It's quite difficult um, to do that because... It's a generic product. Mm. It's um, you know it's made in China in some factory or something like that. There's, yeah, it's hard to get the purpose out of that. <laughs> yeah, it's already on Amazon. It already yeah. looks amazing, yeah. um, and and it can work. There's whole businesses there, mm. but it's really hard to to communicate a point of difference in that. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. Usually, most people we chat to, there's like some connection there. Mm. It's come from some personal need met or mm. just some care or two minds get together mm. and there's mm. always something mm. and so once you can find that it's trying to turn that into pictures that into video Understand, that yeah. into more pictures yeah yeah um and then the other aspect is like um uh social and like you know social media obviously uh digital advertising and marketing um and how that's affected i guess content production um, o- over the last sort of 10 years maybe since you started maybe yep. 15 years ago yep. um, and I guess it's like there's more of a demand for volume isn't there yep. um, and it's that balance between yep. 
good quality and volume but how how's that affected things for you and how have you sort of pivoted around uh, that yeah yeah i would say there's a definite pull for volume mm. now that we want to communicate over time instead of just here is the house come and view it if you wish um, so trying to navigate that um, also which is actually a good thing because you don't have to obsess about getting it too perfect because no. you, you're going to have many goes at it. Oh, yeah. Um, so yeah. that's one thing that's quite crippling for creators and mm. crippling for business owners mm. is like trying to make it perfect. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think a good example is like we've just um, signed up this client and when we sign up a client, we sort of say to them, look, you know, send through all your assets so we can review them just so that we can see what we're playing with mm. to, do, to do the ads. Yeah. Um, and she was sort of like, oh, well, here's a video, you know, that we've done. What do you think of this video? Yeah. And so we watched <laughs> watch the video and it was, it was fine. It was okay. Yeah. But I was like, that's just one video. Like, you know, we need another 20 of those. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's like, so we're always hungry for volume. Yeah. And I think, whereas what you're saying is brands are like sometimes a bit fixed on that one video. Like, what do you think of this video? Yeah. Um, yeah. And it can go both ways. Yeah. Like we're, we're like, what? You need 20? Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> we're going to pour our last work into one. It's yeah. like, how could, it, how could 20 possibly is good? And so there's, there's a tension there. And, but that's, that's what kind of the market needs. Mm. And, and so we struggle with that mm. for sure. The quality quantity. Mm. It's, there's like this, the quality curve. It's the diminishing curve. As time goes on. <laughs> or as the volume goes up, yeah. It gets less better. <laughs> so, and then actually um, my mate who I started the didgeridoo business with, he said, because we were like putting so much effort into like polishing perfect and like mouthpiece, awesome. Back. And, um, and he's like, we'd spend all weekend on this thing and on Monday morning it sells and it's gone. He's like, if, mm. if people's expectations are here, Mm. it's okay to be here mm. you don't need to have it here yeah that's right like 80% is better than 100 yeah so to speak yeah. which is controversial yes to people to business owners because you're saying it doesn't need to be perfect and business mm. owners but I want it perfect and it's controversial to like people who make the imagery yeah our industry like, yeah I, this could be better uh, but there is, there's just a fact it's diminishing returns and you've got to know when to call it and make more because the insights will come from making more. Mm. For example, um, we've just started doing on Insta the week that was, mm -hmm. which is just a little summary of what happened that week. In your business? In the business. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Just yeah. a way to communicate. Stuff like yep. this. Yeah. And if you, it would be crippling to try and get the first one perfect. Mm. You would spend a whole day trying to do it. Yeah. But if the, if, if the philosophy behind it is like, well, it's going to be every week, by like the 10th or 15th time, we'll have a pretty good idea about it. So let's just start <laughs> yeah. and give it a crack. Yeah, yeah. And then we'll learn so much along the way. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, it is a really tough thing in our industry and it does pop up every time. Um, yeah, it's that, that argument between efficiency versus like getting it perfect. Yeah. Um, I think that kind of goes, leans into the, um, into the next topic, which is about obsessed about perfection. Um, and, you know, yeah, you, we, we see it all the time. Like, you know, is it worth having a meeting to discuss the different color variations? Or maybe we need a better font or something like that. Or should we just get the campaign out? Let's just see what it goes, you know, how it goes. Yeah. And, you know, we could be like arguing about a color when that color is not even like relevant, for example, or the photo that you want to use yeah. doesn't, it's not getting the sales. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, and it feels like the, the foundation to that is trust. Mm. What we find is uh, clients that we work with where they trust us, we trust them mm. and we can get the feedback on what works or not. Then you get more momentum. There's less like, absolute of we can like well let's try this we've done these safe ones let's take a risk on this mm. and try it mm. will you test it yeah we'll test it mm. if it works great just unlocked a new mm. thing and if it doesn't 
no one's going to die. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. And so, so that is a that's pretty healthy mm. when you trust each other and you can experiment. Mm. Then you can stumble across things that work. It's we've had other experiences where the clients just all maths, all conversion rates, all spreadsheets. Yeah, right. So and gone the other way. Yeah. Yeah, and we made an unboxing video about the product, one of their thirty or forty products, and it converted really well on Google Ads and so then they wanted that video made for every one of their products so they could all convert really well and they didn't convert as well and it's like there's so many little variables it's like you you can't really I mean the maths are important and because obviously we're making something to sell a product so getting the feedback is good Mm. but just because it worked perfectly this time if we do a hundred of those it doesn't necessarily separate. mean it's going to, yeah. No. And it's so true. I mean, like, I kind of feel like there's the brand mm-hmm. and a lot of, you know, a lot of clients will come to us and they'll be like, okay, the brand is there, but not quite. Yeah. Needs a little bit of work. Needs guys like you to go in there and do the photography, yeah. jazz it up a little bit more to get it to a certain standard. Yeah. And then you, it's like, you know, when you build a house, you need the concrete foundation set in place before you start building everything else Mm -hmm. sometimes that's not quite right so it needs a little bit of adjustment often right often yeah so we'll say part of it yeah it's we have to be very honest we have to say look look you're not quite there yet you need to get it to this Mm -hmm. and so they'll go to invest in that but that's like your foundation of your brand but i think sometimes people emphasize too much on the style guide the foundation and then that is the set piece and there's no leeway around it but I think moving forward, like especially in the digital age, um, in the next five to ten years, there's the foundational brand, but then there's brand evolution, which yeah. is like, okay, well, that's my brand, okay, that's my base template, but then in the next six months to a year, it's going to have to evolve slowly, and that'll depend on feedback, like what you said, yeah. which is like, oh, that unboxing video was great for that yeah. particular product, but then you could use that same unboxing video for another product, it doesn't quite work. Or even the ad types, you know, like you've got canvas ads yeah. and videos and photography. Sometimes photos work really well yeah. and the video doesn't. Mm-hmm. So how do you, you know, it's things that you can't quite explain, but you just got to test and trial different things, right? Forever. Yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. It's, a, it's forever. Yeah. It's a forever approach. Yeah. Yeah. For us, when, we, when we've just figured ourselves out, mm. then we've evolved and then we've got to really figure out mm. who we are again mm. now. So mm-hmm. it's like, I think, and it's kind of liberating. It is, um, yeah, yeah. Because, because it, you can evolve. And the m- one thing I've noticed with imagery is the market's definitely evolved. Think mm. about most things, actually, like mm. um, fashion e-com. Australia's still not there yet, but overseas, like in, um, Europe, it's not so cool to retouch skin anymore. Yeah, right, yeah. Like, they uh, need to yeah. look. They, I know what you mean. You need to show the stretch marks and the all stre- the stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. show all the imperfections. Show them human. Yeah, yeah that's and right. even like show marks on the set. Yeah. And, and whereas not too long ago, especially in Australia, perfect. It needs to be perfect. Cut out, skin flawless, not a wrinkle in the garment, and so you really polish the life yeah. out of it, which worked back then, but now it's not cool anymore. And products are similar too. Jewelry, massively. Mm. It's like not that many years ago, if it looked like a render, if it was perfect and all Like white, all the lighting's making it sparkle and everything. Perfect, yeah. 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 Then um, that worked. But now, now we're finding, and this is where brands, jewellery brands are having to evolve. Like, oh, actually, like seeing him in imperfection and shooting it on a mm. surface and not having it cut out on white. But it's that, it's, I think people are expecting that just a juxtaposition, you know, like between something that really looks okay what is it meant to look like when it's polished and what is the actual thing look like and that's what social media has done yeah because it's like created this um, platform where authentic content is really important um and i I think particularly like it not instagram created this glamorous sort of Mm -hmm. everything's picture perfect yeah um but then tiktok came along and just sort of said like you know, this is <laughs> yeah. Yeah. this is what it really looks like. Yeah. So that's um, the whole user-generated content thing, which is like just people, influencers creating their own videos with no lighting, nothing, yeah. and just testing and trialing products. And you know, yeah. um, and people believe it because it's real. Like, yeah, people yeah. Are like oh, that 
Oh, so that's what it actually looks like when you open up the jar or whatever it is yeah. and take it out and put it on your hand. Um, people want to touch and feel it. And I think if someone's doing that, it's almost saving them the trouble of having to buy it yep. you know, and all that sort of stuff. So There's definitely um, that movement. Like bef- mm. not. So when we first started, you want everything to look like untouchable, intouchable, whatever word it is, like an ad, mm. like just amazing. And now the imagery just needs to look real and touchable mm. and tangible and textures and and um, smears and yeah, that we want to get percent yeah we want to know what it feels like in yeah. real life so we know what we're getting because um and also like it's a representation of like transparency like people yeah. want to know like if you're asking money from a customer you need to be honest with them and upfront like this is actually what it looks like yeah this is what people have said about it you know so I think that honesty and transparency is really key so yeah I think you know, I think perfection is important to, to a certain level, but there's a balance. Yep. And I guess for a client or an e-commerce owner, it's working with agencies to find that balance yep. uh, to make an effective win-win type situation. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yep. So. And, and to just both trust each other and like figure it out along the way. Mm. That's it. Mm, 100%. That yeah. Take, takes the pressure out of the situation. Um, the other aspect is, you know... Um, we talked about like images on their own and I guess this is more around brand as well and um, like photos on their own just you know they, they need things like web copy and good design elements yeah. and stuff like that for it to all come together yeah yeah just maybe if you can tell us a bit more about your experience around that yeah yes um, I would say especially in ads mm. especially on websites the copy is really important um, some people only read the copy. Some people only look at the pictures. It's a, I'm like a visual guy, but I find the good copy is like mm. a really nice experience. Um, so part of it's the copy. In general, when what comes to mind when you say that is execution, as in where every photo or video we create is going to live somewhere. Mm. So it doesn't matter if it looks awesome on our screen if it goes to work and it's not used well mm. then you don't fully realize the value mm. banners nicely cropped or um, up you know cropping a four five instead of a square because then you know a bit more screen mm. um, with the uh, um, screen real estate so from and this is where I see the difference when we're because we work with people like yourself who are very image savvy savvy and then people who are in startup mode Um, solo businesses who Mm. just don't even know how to crop an image either is fine but you you really want someone to know what they're doing with imagery Mm. to actually put them into application often and we we try and like make the the imagery as user friendly as possible but if we're say if we were supplying a photo to you or any designer if we took it with like nice negative space we know you can crop it like this and get a detail. We know you can pull a banner out of it and put mm. some text here. Mm. Um, you can go story. There's enough room. On its own, there's kind of photos within it. Mm. And, and so we'll take it like that. But if we're handing it, often we'll like hand it over and then it gets used over here, not purpose for over here. And it's like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> it could have had so much more impact. And do you find that when that happens, like, is it because the people that are doing that don't have much experience from a marketing perspective or a digital digital perspective? Oh, probably probably um, and it's like imagery perspective. Mm. Say, say yes, but it's more like mm. ask me to um, stage a room with furniture and it's like I struggle a little bit. Um, and so some people, if you told them like the crop's a bit out, they'll be like, the what? Mm. And so everyone has their strength mm. and... I mean, designers will like agonize over a pixel. Um, oh, our yeah, designers who, who we work with, yeah, she's yeah. like, I think, uh, just, just let me, and then here's the <laughs> new version. And it's like, whatever helps you sleep at night, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it makes a difference. So mm. uh, working with people who can see it yeah. to purpose it. Right? I mean, I think our designers, um, you, you definitely can tell from a designer's perspective, it's really nice to have great content for post-production work because post-production is now like a different phase it's like just as important which is working with a bank of assets which you can constantly reuse tweak 
crop, you know, yeah. move to different platforms, dimensions and stuff like that. So if yeah. you've got that really good quality asset yeah. um, where you can just constantly refer to, yeah. it's just going to ma- it's going to last for three months, maybe six months, yeah. if you you know, um, and then you'll do a re- another shoot again. Yeah. So I think, yeah, it's just that element of having a good branded content that you can just repurpose. Yeah. Um, and do good post-production work. So if it's if it's not done well, it just makes their job so much harder. Yeah. yeah, and that's something we're careful of, trying to make things usable in many places. Mm. Filming video, like mm. let's go 4K a little bit wider so mm. then we can crop that same clip for a story mm. and we can crop it wide for a banner. Mm. Not always possible, but it's always thinking about that. Who, how is this going to be made? Can we kill two birds with one stone? Mm. Or do we have to shoot and shoot? Yeah, I understand. Always, always thinking. And about do you that. think, like, I mean, for me, you know, people talk about brand, and a lot of people's, I guess, perception of what brand is, especially from small business owners and startups to you know bigger, bigger companies. Um, there's different definitions of it, um, but for me, I think what we're sort of seeing is that a brand is an encapsulation of a lot of different things, a lot of different elements. It's photography is like one thing, yeah. and then there's the fonts that you use. It's the the color palettes. Yeah. It's obviously the logo itself. It's the template of the uh, website that you choose, you know, yeah. um, and the copy, all of that yeah. sort of stuff. So once you get all of that, that is your brand. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like all of those things, all of those components to create one. It's like the red line thing that you're talking yeah. about or the heartbeat. Yeah. 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 It's just a feeling, isn't it? Mm. Like a brand is a feeling. When you see 100%. something over there, you know it belongs to the same per- person over yes. there. Um, and that's that's um that can evolve like mm. it will evolve mm. as you know like a person's personality if we relate it to a person mm. that can evolve mm. as they get wiser um, a business can too and yeah and yeah. i think it's just having that perspective to be open to it evolving in the first place so once yeah. you have that mindset yeah. like you said it can be quite liberating yeah. for for a business owner yeah um yeah and the style guide matt so in contradiction to that the style guide is so valuable yeah, to know is. look just don't screw this up use this font use this picture this way and space it like that yeah. and it's going to look okay yeah, that's right yeah um don't change it no, no unless we like make a fundamental change yeah love a style guide oh yeah so do we yeah, yeah 100 it's like that's the first question it's like where's your style guide yeah don't have one oh yeah or, or is that it oh okay yeah or you know when the style guide comes and it's like two three pages long or something yeah and that's it. Like this. Yeah, I know. So, and, and it's like it's such a nice kind of yeah. doorpost to work within. Yeah. And because brands just fragment, it's kind of like yeah. Dropbox folders. Oh. You spend a whole day cleaning it up, and then in two seconds, it's a mess. Yes. And so, or like leaves blowing in the door. It's like. That's a good brand, analogy. Yeah. Brands will just, by nature, will fragment, and then you're like, oh shit, we're fragmented. Pull it back together. Pull it back. Yeah, it's a constant cycle. Yeah. 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 And, and then at some point you go, actually, we want to change direction to here, mm. but it'll still fragment. Mm. And so I love a document that kind of keeps you on that oh, straight 100%. and narrow. Yeah. Mm. Um, and so I guess to sort of wrap things up, like how do you, how do you feel, um, you know, some effect in terms of strategic direction? Like where are you guys? Obviously, COVID, um, mm-hmm. e-com has been quite huge. Mm-hmm. Um, where do you guys, that's a big industry that you've been played in for a while where do you sort of see the future for us personally personally and and in general yeah Yeah. Um, personally and personally like this is so we create photos and videos that's what we do but our real value Mm. is like seeing someone whether it's the person on camera or Mm, whether it's mm, the mm. business owner Mm. feel prouder and walk taller I like that, yeah. That, that for us, is the most important marketing. Regardless so, of what it, what, whether it's a product, service, whatever it is. Yeah. It's like get them to feel proud about their brand. Yeah. yeah and shout out from the top of the roof and yeah. say, hey, this is ours. Yeah. Yeah. So that's something that we're not perfect, but something that we're conscious of. If we can have a client experience that, that goes well that they feel good about themselves and proud mm. about the product and we shoot it well and um, that is like so simple yeah it's like but a no-brainer so powerful like because so so, you see so many shoots like clients doing shoots investing money in shoots and it's like 
yeah, it was good, but not quite. Yeah. Didn't quite hit the mark, you know. Yeah. Whereas your what you're saying is your your results focus. You're focused on having that feeling for your client to, you know, this is this is going to be an amazing product. We're really proud of this. Yeah. yeah. Wow, it looks better than yeah. real life. This yeah. is amazing. I feel great. Yeah. Like I can't Exceed wait to Exceed expectations. Put it on the yeah. 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 It's like it's um, less measurable, but I know a person feeling like that will be way more beneficial to their business than a person like, oh, sorry, here's my card. It's a bit, you know, sorry, you know, don't judge me. And you know, they look at my website, it's like 100 years old. And it's not a good, it's, no. it's not a good base. So that's something we've only really tuned into this year. Mm, it's something I like wanna, that. It's a nice get, purpose, nice we why. We get better at. That, yeah. That's our why. You're paying us to take photos and videos. They need to be good, mm. of course. Um, and many people can do it good. And so, yes, we need to nail that, but yeah, that's kind of the, the subcurrent while we're No, doing I love it. it. That's awesome, Matt. Thanks, yes. mate. Thanks for your time. Pleasure. Thank Pleasure you. Pleasure to have you on the show. It. Yeah, that was really cool. Thank you so much. Um, and please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, give us a like. And um, yeah, that's a wrap. Thanks for having us. Cheers. See ya. <laughs>